Hey, my name is Murphy Cargis, and thanks for stopping by Sugar Ray Songs in Order. This is number 12, Caboose. Caboose is a very cool song for us. This was the song that actually got us a record deal. Um, we made this We made this when we were the Shrinky Dinks. So, yeah, and then the riff, we wrote this um, at, at this re at rehearsal place. We were in West Side Costa Mesa, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I didn't write it. Um, I wrote the B part, I think, and the fast part. Um, um, but um, I don't know, I feel like McG maybe, or just somebody, it might have been Stan, or I, th I don't know why. McG sometimes would go like, hey man, let's try this, and try to make, play the most simple riff of all time. Um, and Stan had guitar a lot too, but for some reason, anyways. So the, the riff is really simple, and a funny thing about it, um, I do want to say, this is the riff. Now, okay, here's a funny thing. We, Roddy and I played it differently for years and I never knew it. We never knew it. The riff is a syncopated. It goes to C. G, C, G, G, F sharp, C, F sharp, G. Do, da, do, 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 do. And then, so Ronnie's playing that syncopated C. I played the one, I played. I don't know why, but when we cut it, you know, I guess sometimes when I have students, I, I, I tell them it's what sounds good, and I didn't know this, but I wouldn't have said, oh, you know what? The push and pull of the syncopated and the, it doesn't sound good for the guitar and the bass to go to syncopated together. So I just went. I actually hit a second G, which it doesn't do in the riff. It goes do da do 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 do. And I was going do do da do do do. And I'm like, Rodney, let, let's play. And we were playing it. I'm like, dude, we're playing it differently, I noticed. And he goes, what? And I go, yeah, listen. And I go, you're going, you've always gone down, right? And, and I'm like, I haven't been playing that. I've been playing um, the downbeat. And so I tried to play it. I go, let's play it the way you're playing it. We both go. And it sounded so bad. It just, for some reason, sounded like, um, it sounded kind of light and like wimpy. It didn't sound as fat and meaty and as, and as just loopy, good with the drums. Stan was sitting right there and I'm like, Stan, play that. So just the weirdness of like, the yin and the yang of writing with somebody. Sometimes you write things and you don't know why they work, but they work to your, to your ear and to your mind and to, your, to feeling it, and you just don't question it. You just move ahead, you know? If you can notice it, try to notice it, but it's kind of weird. Anyway, let's do it. Here we go. It starts off with, Mark had the idea to put, um, you know, this classic moment in time in sports American history with Al Michaels. Do you believe in miracles? That's a great idea. Americans win the gold in hockey over the Russians. That starts off Sugar Ray, Shrinky Dinks. And then, let's listen to it. It's like, do ga That's maybe what it does. do do ga do 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 So there's like a, it's like an interlocked linking. do do ga do 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 There we go. They slide. I always did that on the first first lyric right there. With a high F. Stan accented that with the symbol on the snare. B flat. I'd always play octaves a lot. Sometimes I'd walk the A up to the B flat. But keep it simple, just play the B flat. Room. I'm gonna play it the way Rod is right here. See how weird it sounds. That's it. As opposed to that way. E flat, huh? Pause here. Cue the footage of the guy slamming at Tiki Bar Volcom Party. Find your third. It's 
slide up to the high B flat, and then. Stan and I do a little fill here together on the second half of this. The benefit of playing something live before you record it. And then out. It was that little, I did it a little bit early on the first one. I did an E to G and then a slide and he, he caught me. No fill here, just silence and then. And then I go up. You know, goes without saying, that song just crushed live for us. Um, that was the song that got us our record deal too from uh, uh, Atlantic Records. Uh, the story goes that, um, well, here's how it happened actually. That video, we shot the video. It came out amazing. McGee just crushed it, hit a grand slam for us. Captured lightning in a bottle. Um, and I look back and it really does have like a weird thing about it that just worked. I, I don't know why it worked. I mean, I give a lot of credit to Mark and, and McGee and everybody else in the band. I was the biggest nerd in the band at the time. And I, I'd say those guys kind of brought me into caring about like what we did and what it looked like. B before that, I was always just like, let's just practice and let's just play to a click. And um, so the video really, really came off and um, it got its uh, way to Lee Hyman. No, no, no. It, it, okay, the video, this is a crazy story how we got signed. My dad actually helped, everybody helped, you know. I mean, Ed McGrath, Mark's dad helped. He invested in us early. I mean, everybody did really. Uh, all the family members of, of, of the guys in Sugar Ray. Um, but so my dad, when we finished the video, uh, he specifically knew of a guy named Randy Hyman, who I think he was, um, he was somebody on tour and he knew that he had a brother who was a big manager who would like work with you too or something. Uh, I'll explain why I laugh in a minute. Um, so we got the video to my dad. He got it to Randy Hyman and we got the video to Lee Hyman. It made its way to Lee Hyman um, who actually wound up being our manager for years and years with Chip Quigley. So the, the Caboose video all the way from Newport Beach you know, like conceived in McGee's little, little spot in Corona Del Mar. We come up with the idea, the riff's written, we record it, it comes off good, the video works, you know, all the family members come together. You know, my dad says, hey, I know a guy. And so we met that guy. We actually went to a concert in Long Beach and saw um, Soul Asylum because this guy, I think Randy was on the road um, with Gus, this other guy. And so we got the videotape to them Randy took it, he took it to his brother in New York City, went back, I mean, how far is this crazy story travel? Lee saw it, he loved it, he got with uh, his, his friend Chip Quigley, who they put themselves together to manage us, they put it, they offered us a deal, they said, you're gonna get a record deal within six months, um, we wanna sign you to a management deal, and if we don't give you a record deal within six months, we're gone. And it was this impressive list of like, every killer record label. Um, it was mostly majors, you know. There, I don't even think there was like uh, indie indie labels on it. So, anyways, there might have been a few, but the point was like, we're like, yes, great. You want to manage us? You want to like really go to bat for us? And so, it's crazy. So from there, we signed with them. Um, I don't know whether it was Chip or Lee had the connection to Nick Casanelli, who got the video at Atlantic Records, and, and Nick was in some level where he wasn't way up high yet, and um, and he knew a guy. And Nick, you if you watch this. Hopefully I'm getting this right. Um, you got it to your friend who knew Doug Morris way at the top. And so it was literally like in the mail room, you know, you connected with this guy who had known Doug and was kind of just roving around the company. And it goes all the way up to Doug Morris. You, Nick, were there and that the friend of Doug and Doug and Doug watches this video we made in Newport Beach of the song Caboose, the one I just played, and literally turns to, to you, Nick, and that guy and says, sign them, give them whatever they want. That's why I got into music in the first place. That's like, that's so legendary to me that he said that. Um, Doug Morris, talk about a guy that had balls and an and instinct and a, a, a flair for risk. I mean, he sees one song, he didn't know who we were, he didn't know if everything else sucked, 
he saw one video that kind of worked in a song and us going crazy in the video and Mark and you know Rodney, Stan, myself, the Bulldog um, and said sign that band, give them whatever they want. That's why I got into music in the first place. Um, a little backstory to the time, um, there was, at the time it was very, very like, you know, like Alice in Chains and, and Nirvana and you know, Soundgarden and bands we loved and, and, and literally worshipped, but we were kind of different, you know, we, were, we had different things and so our sound was different. Um, so at the time though, like I think Doug Morris saw that and was like, wow, what is this? This is so different. This is so like, it, maybe it felt fresh to him and, and, um, and was louder and, and it was just different. So it was a timing thing that I think we hit perfectly to have him watch that and literally within like, you know, a couple of weeks or something of everything happening, um, we were offered a, re a, re a record deal from Atlantic Records, a huge record deal actually. He put his uh, money where his mouth was and it was, it, it just seemed like a fake dream. It was like, it was insane. Like really? We're, we're getting offered like a seven record deal like in like the, like up, you know, seven figures. It was crazy. So um, what did we do? Uh, obviously, you know, the four of us, um, Mark, Stan, Rodney, myself, we went to me and Ed's on 17th Street in Costa Mesa and sat down, got a pitcher of beer. We did some, uh, we did some basketball, I think, and um, we ordered like, I think we ordered a pizza, a meatball sub. Mark and I was always, always order like a meatball sub and we like, just get a meatball sub. It's, you know, you gotta get a meatball sub, man. It's, you can never go wrong if you have that extra. So we got a pizza, meatball sub, a pitcher of beer, and we sat there and we just had a little bit of food and we had a, a couple of cold beers and we're looking at this record deal from Atlantic Records just going, is this even real? And we signed it right there and then that's how the, the, the journey began. So there it is. Anyways, kind of a long story. Thanks for hanging in there. If anybody's hung in there, you guys are winners. You guys rock. Um, but uh, it was, you know, so Caboose was a really important song for us um, in the evolution and the whole story of what um, the Shrinky Dinks and Sugar Ray was, were and, and was and, and is. Um, it was literally the song that bridged the gap that took us from, you know, getting, just being a band um, around, you know, Costa Mesa, Newport Beach, and then getting a record deal and having a shot. So um, just an incredible song uh, for all of us. So anyways, thanks for hanging in there on this super long um, episode of Sugar Ray Songs in Order. Uh, that is Caboose number 12. So thank you. Later. Bye.